I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python playlist and we're going to take a look at how to do a quick transformation of an SQLite query into HTML, which is a little bit nicer to read than outputting to a text file or just having some output in the console. And HTML gives you a nice way of sort of outputting data in a very simple way. Let's get to it. Looking for additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so this is an output file that I created, uh, myhtml.html, and it's just test results from some machine learning that I did, uh, deep learning. And as you can see, it's got some pictures and it's got, you know, some text and from, you know, fields in my database. And that's what we want to try building today. And one neat feature of the HTML is that you can import it directly into Word. So if you're creating a presentation or into PowerPoint or whatever, if you've got a big table full of results or something, a, a table of anything really, uh, you can quite easily uh, put HTML into other formats. And so that makes your, your output uh, very nice and easy and very custom. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import SQLite 3 and I'm going to use NumPy as part of this because uh, there's a there's some rounding that I want to do and uh, not really that important but um, so what I'll do first is I'm going to give some feedback to the user just saying starting and I'm going to get ready to set up a connection uh, to SQLite so I'm going to create that file name and I've got some backslashes in it there so I'm going to put the R in front of that string there and it's just a little uh, database called firedb.db and uh, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna uh, do a try accept a finally uh, block here and uh, what we're gonna do first is we'll we'll do our connection uh, so we'll just say CNN equals sqlite3.connect and then the file name and then I'll I'll print uh, database connected so we know that we've got a connection and uh, and then I'll create my SQL now now uh, there were quite a few fields in that uh, original um, in the output that you saw at the beginning of this uh, video here um, so it had an ID number it had a description um, it had a, a target in it a field list which was sort of like the features of of the uh, um, of the machine learning uh, model that I was working on, uh, then the layers. So I had I built a, a layer model where you could uh, you could change the layers of of the deep learning model and to to be a wide model or a deep model, um, and you could add as many layers as you wanted to test that out and see how how you know how accurate you could be. Um, and then, you know, the batch size, the epochs, um, and then scores that I got back from my deep learning model. So, so th those aren't really that important uh, for this demonstration. I'll probably be doing some deep learning stuff uh, in, in later videos or in upcoming videos. Uh, but for today, I just wanted to get that data out so that I could uh, use it to create uh, an HTML table. And then we can output that to a file and then that's a lot neater to look at than just a you know a text file output or whatever and and if you know html you're going to be even better at this because you're going to be able to customize uh this like crazy today i'm just doing a simple table output um with a very sort of minimal document html document but i want you to be able to see how easy it is to get that and so i'm gonna I create a cursor. I'll do cs equals cnn.cursor. I'll do uh, execute the SQL uh, on that cursor and uh, and then I'm going to get our records back uh, by doing cs.fetchall and uh, and then we'll move on and we'll set up our accept blocks here. And to do this we'll do accept error as e and we'll print off that e uh, if we get an error um, and then we'll do finally which will have commands that occur whether or not there's an error uh, at the end of that so and then it says you know if there's a connection try to close that connection and then 
uh, for the whole script I'm going to put done at the end so we know that it made it to the end and uh, and that's really our our fetch right there um, so we'll we'll get some data um, I'm getting everything where the ID is greater than 60 which was sort of like the 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 highest or most recent tests that were done uh, in my uh, deep learning model and uh, I'll print um, you know record selected so that I know that I'm getting something here and we'll do our first test just to hit F5 and just to make sure that we've got you know something coming out of this um, and uh, it looks like uh, okay I'll fire that off and it's just taking a moment all of the commands ran uh, it started database connected record selected and then it was finished and uh, that's sort of a good test there to make sure we can actually get our database connection now I can try to print out maybe something from each of the rows just as a test so I'll do four uh, row in RST and I'll do uh, print uh, row zero row and then item zero inside of that um, so we'll do zero and then I'll rerun this again and uh, we'll see what we get when we rerun that um, oh there we go okay so it started up database connected record selected and there's the ID numbers of the tests that uh, of the test rows that uh, were, were in there so we've got an ID row a description target field list layers batch size epoch and then some scores and uh, and so I took the very first row which is zero or first column which is zero and that's the ID column so that's what those numbers are on the left hand side of your screen there and so to do an HTML document it's actually not really that hard now I am aware that there are many other ways that you can get HTML from you know uh, data frames or you can do it using uh, there's different methods that you can use in, inside of Python and I think there's a there's a shell command you can use with SQLite that'll give you some HTML output uh, but if you write your own HTML um, you can really customize it and dump out exactly what you'd like to see and that's one of the nice things about doing that now I think the smallest HTML document is uh, is HTML and then a title and it might be head you might need the head element as well but we'll we'll leave that out here you can try it with or without and so uh, make sure that you have an HTML tag a title tag and a body uh, and then you don't have to have a table but we're going to use a table here today and uh, really all you need to do once you create that sort of introduction to the HTML uh, with the first line there with the you know the <clears throat> HTML title body and table then what you can do is for each row that you got in your return record set there um, you can basically uh, create the rows of the HTML table and you can do it in a very custom way uh, however you'd like to display it and that's kind of the beauty of doing it uh, as a custom HTML output is that um, you have far greater control over it. You know, lots of different tools can do your HTML, you know, for you. Uh, but if you take a little bit of time, learn how to do some tables and learn how to, you know, put pictures and things into HTML, uh, you can output a very nice um, sort of output a very nice table uh, that you can then use in in all different kinds of formats um, you know you can you can import it into Word and it looks great you can put it into PowerPoint or you know into Excel um, and that's what makes it so flexible is that you can you can basically create a nice output and uh, uh, right from the command line so that first line there is uh, what I did was I, I had some bold you can see the, and I did some italics uh, with the I tag there and I put a, a break at the end of it a line break and uh, and so you can see I used the row ID uh, and I used uh, the first um, 
which is actually the second column, the description uh, that you can see in the SQL above there. And so um, that's basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a single entry in, or a single column in this table with a bunch of fields and I'll save us some time so you don't have to watch me typing. Uh, and, and I'm just going to put in first the target um, and then the field list, which is the features that were used in, in the uh, machine learning model and then the layers and the batch size and the epochs and then the uh, accuracy and I did put some some rounding in there so that we didn't have sort of crazy crazy precision on our on our numbers and uh, there's a loss uh, as well and you know um, this is you know and then I'll just end end my row so you can see that row is ended there and then that's a, a good first start. So what we can do there is now that we've got that a row for each row in our in the records that we received, we've got an HTML row uh, in our table. Now we can just end our HTML uh, document or string before we actually print it or write it to file, I guess you'd say. And so we'll we'll do uh, uh, we'll end our table. Uh, and then we'll end uh, the body of our of our HTML, and then we'll uh, end the HTML uh, all all together, and that will make uh, enough for an HTML document, uh, which you can then just basically you can just say file equals uh, open, and then give it a file name, and uh, and then we need to open this new file in write mode. So I'll just say myhtml.html and I'll put that in uh, write mode. And then once I've got my file object there, I can just go file.writehtml. And, and then I'll close that and that's gonna save it. And then, then we have an HTML document in the same folder as our script. So we can take a look at that and make sure we don't have any errors in there hit F5 and boom, it just ran right through that super fast. And now I can go and grab the, uh, the HTML. Okay, so that was our first run at it. Here's our fire out. There's my script there. And if I double click this my HTML file, um, you can see now I've got this sort of, I've got one column. I could have put each of these into its own column, but that would have been a crazy wide table. And so I've actually stacked uh, the, this output because I'm going to put pictures beside it and you can see there's a test ID there's some bold and there's some italics in there um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like and now I've got this other uh, folder where I I did a whole bunch of uh, uh, models I, I trained a bunch of models deep learning models here's a confusion matrix um, there's the loss uh, graph showing showing the, the training and testing and I did an automatic output uh, for each of the tests that I did uh, when I was testing wide versus deep models. Um, so I was trying some really, you know, deeper models versus very wide ones. And so each of the ID numbers that you see on the left there, I also output um, the the uh, I output the the graphs for each of those. And so. Uh, just so that, that they would be easy to present. And so you can see this is a this is a confusion matrix for item 65, or test number 65, I should say. And it looks pretty balanced um, in that case. And so what we want to do is um, we want to be able to put those pictures into our HTML table. And we can do that by adding some more cells to our HTML table. And so to do that, you see, I just took the TR, the end of the table row, off of that line above there, because we're going to add some more TDs, which are the table data, which is essentially cells in our table. So we're going to add more um, cells on each row, and we're going to add a cell, and we're going to put a picture in each cell, and we're going to do it for all three pictures. And so to do one of these, what I need to do is I'll do my TD, and then I'm just like you might see if you're an HTML programmer, 
um, you know, we'll use the image source uh, and I'll put that C dev fire in there with the row ID. And now that's the row ID that you see up above that I loaded into the variable. And uh, so because I, I output those pictures in such a way that I could map them back to here. And so uh, you can do that. I can put in the row ID for accuracy and then end of the table data. And that will do one of the pictures, the accuracy picture. And I'll do the same for each of the others. I'll save us time on typing here. And uh, just to show you uh, that we can add those. So there's our image source, uh, row ID. Uh, and so I've done accuracy loss and confusion uh, for that model. And then now I can put that end of table row back in there. Um, and that's going to, uh, you know, finish off our um, HTML document. Now we'll see how this turns out. Um, you know, uh, those pictures are pretty big, so we'll see how that looks. But we've got our table, table row, there's our table data tag, and end of the first cell, start of the third, fourth, and fifth cells, and, uh, and then the end of the table row and end of the table, end of body, end of HTML. And, uh, and that's sort of a basic document. Uh, so let's run that and see what we get. Um, I'll do an F5 there, and that just blasted through, no problem. There's our, our result. And I'll go back to the directory that uh, has that in there. So there's our script and our file, which got overwritten. And oh boy, look at the size of those. Okay, so the HTML is going to be quite large there. I can resize this a bit. And uh, it does not look like, uh, they look pretty cool. You can see that they're in, they're actually in the table. And the data is off to the left there. And uh, the pictures are pretty big. So I think what we want to do is we want to maybe modify this so that our pictures aren't as big so that it looks nice on the line. And we can do that using our HTML, uh, our HTML um, code here that we're building. Uh, and uh, let's go do that now. So uh, to do that, we're going to uh, use our image source and we're going to put the size property in here or the width property. And we'll say width equals say 200. Um, and uh, we can do that on each of our pictures just for argument's sake just so you can sort of see you know how you can build your HTML you know you might want to have your table look differently and obviously you'll have different data and things like that uh, but uh, one of the things we can do is we can change the width and all that all those kinds of things and I'll double click our file there and I'm just gonna grab that and tab and drag it off here so we can see it so that looks a little bit better um, you can see you know this is our table and you know we can see all of the data that we had in our list there you know our italics that we created we've got bolding we've gotten you know pictures off to the side uh, nicely in a little table here and so this is sort of one way that you could you know you could display things or there's a hundred different ways you could do it and you could accommodate that with uh, you know using HTML um, all the different features that are available and that's how you can go from SQLite to HTML interested in more content on these topics make sure to check out my patreon the link is in the description